Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about zeros and poles of analytic uh, functions f of z. So we're, when we mean poles uh, um, of specific analytic functions, we're, we're going to specifically examine cases of uh, uh, what we'll call a rational function. Where we have, uh, oops, uh, a p of z in the numerator and a q of z in the denominator, where uh, both of these are uh, uh, polynomials. Uh, we can think of them as polynomials, or just, uh, but we don't even really need to do that. But the notion is uh, uh, there is some sort of rational function like that. Okay, and so when we mean analytic, we mean analytic except at poles, so otherwise it would be, uh, that, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, so one way we can characterize poles are, uh, is that if, um, suppose we have that there is some, you know, some z naught where uh, q of z at um, z naught is zero, but uh, p at z naught is not equal to zero. Okay, all right. So that, of course, is a pole, and of course, uh, it has some sort of order, an order m. Uh, if if q of z uh, is has a, so this would be a pole of order m for f of z, and q of z though is uh, it's going to be a root of order m, okay? So uh, polynomials, and then we'll think of those as analytic functions. So one thing we can do, of course, is always take q of z. We can always find that, uh, we can always factorize q of z, an analytic function, into this form, where we have a g of z, and g of z itself is not equal to zero at z naught. Okay? We can always do that. And then, of course, we can rewrite f of z in this form, uh, which we can call uh, p of z all over g of z. All we can put in the denominator that z minus z zero to the m power. Where this is, okay, uh, analytic at z naught. Okay. Uh, okay. Now let's talk about a, a, a special. So this is a really nice. Uh, if you want to call this a theorem, it's just a, a means. It's using uh, existing theorems we've had. This particular factorizing theorem here, in order to represent poles of functions, in terms of zeros of other functions, uh, q. All right. So now we're going to use this. We're going to come up with a nice shortcut theorem uh, for uh, finding residues. So let's look at uh, finding residues of uh, functions f of z equals uh, p of z over q of z when uh, uh, when f has a simple pole that is m equals one, or rather, uh, q of z can be factored as z minus z naught uh, times q or times g of z. Okay, so we there's a nice way to find residues of this. All right, so again, uh, typically the residue question involves some contour integral, uh, but let's just, uh, what we want to find is, we want to find residue of z at z naught of, oops, uh, p of z over q of z. Okay, and what we're going to do then, of course, is, uh, and, uh, and this is to the first power, there, it's an order m equals 1 uh, uh, root to, to q, 
And what we can do is actually, we have this nice theorem of this is actually equal to uh, P evaluated at Z naught over G evaluated at Z naught. Um, we can also write this another way, and this is actually, and this is where it gets interesting, because uh, this is where it becomes useful. That's uh, P at Z naught times Q over, over Q prime at Z naught, right there. So to get this to get this result, all you have to do is um, because we have this identity, and I may not know what G is, but let's just check this out. If I take Q prime, uh, and that's going to be equal to, of course, uh, taking the uh, derivative of this, so it's going to be just G of Z plus Z minus Z naught times G prime of Z. Okay. Now, what if I take this whole thing? and evaluate it at z naught. Of course, I get q prime at z naught is equal to uh, g at z naught. But when I put in the z naught into here, of course, this whole thing becomes zero. So we find q prime is equal to g uh, when it's evaluated at z naught only. Uh, it could differ otherwise. But now this gives us a really nice shortcut formula for finding the residue when we have a rational function. Uh, all right, so we're going to use that result in the next video um, when we go on to, to um, do all, all sorts of integrations in the complex plane. Uh, so thank you very much.